We're here at the very, very beginning. And I will butcher the first names here. That's a preemptive. I'm going to butcher them. It's just going to happen. Punaheli, Healy, Soriano. He's going to be Soriano from here on out. I gave the college try on the first name. He's Soriano from here on out. And then Oscar Pachota. More confident on that one. Soriano is plus 100 underdog versus Oscar Pachota. Minus 120. Soriano is undefeated coming off a decision win in Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. Uh, Pachota is 2-2 two two in the UFC, losing by submission in his last two outings to uh, Gerald Merchardt and Rodolfo Vieira. I'm spacing for a second, Mike. Didn't you bet Rodolfo Vieira in that fight? Yes, I did. I was say, I'm sorry. I, I knew that sounded familiar. So actually, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to you because you seem to have a better take on Oscar Pachota and uh, Soriano than me. I'm leaning uh, Soriano, actually, but I don't think he's been tested enough. I don't usually stay away from UFC debutants. It's kind of one of my rules, but if you have a hot take, by all means, go for it. Well, um, I, I'm definitely going to go with Punaheli Soriano. Um, I know his submission game is top shelf, top level. I know that uh, Oscar Picota has uh, tapped uh, multiple times, and I have a rule that if you're a tapper, you get the Tappy McTapper tag, and so Oscar's definitely got that, and I will definitely take that even money on Punaheli. Jessica I. Is plus one fifty underdog versus Viviana Araujo. Araujo, Rojo, minus one seventy. Um, six months ago, I got brutally head kicked KO'd by the women's flyweight champ Valentina Shevchenko. Araujo is two and zero in the UFC with her latest win coming against WMMA mainstay Alexis Davis. Granted, that's Alexis Davis coming back after uh, having a kid and having a long time off and coming off a loss. So. I guess you got to weigh that as much as it is. Um, I is the underdog, obviously, because it wasn't that long ago that she got brutally knocked out. And she's definitely teetering in her career. So the UFC must like Viviana a little bit. And they're pushing for that. Or they owe Jessica I something. <laughs> um, I don't see Jessica I coming back with a smart game plan after getting brutally knocked out. So I would lean uh, Araujo. Even though she is the favorite, no bet on this one, given that you don't know how this guy is actually going to perform. Uh, Mike, how do you feel about I versus Araujo? Araujo? Um, I like Vivianu uh, Araujo a lot. Um, we bet her in her debut fight that she took on short notice. Um, she took it in a lower weight, in a lower or higher weight class. I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, she's super sharp in her strike, <clears throat> in her striking, and her clinch. And so I, I think that Jessica I is too barbaric and too archaic in her uh, striking, too flat-footed. She's going to have a lot of problem with Viviani, and so I think that Viviani could actually uh, finish her in this fight. After I give the basics of this fight, I'm going to throw it right to Mike because I know he has a, a def- decent lean and a fighter who really likes in this fight. Brenda Moreno is plus 145 versus Kai Cara France. Minus 165. Moreno is coming off a split decision. No, sorry, split draw against heavy favorite uh, Oscar Oscarov. And we were, we actually bet Moreno in that fight. He We got him at, I believe, similar price he is now. It was plus one, around the plus 145 range uh, against the heavily hyped Oscar Oscarov. Uh, Kai, who, like Moreno, was on uh, Tough 24. That was the flyaway season. Is riding an eight-fight win streak. The last three being in the UFC most recently beating Mark De La Rosa via unanimous decision, which it's decent because Mark De La Rosa is a very good fighter, in my opinion. Uh, Kai is training at City Kickboxing, along with tighter challenger Alexander Volkanovsky, later on this card, and the middleweight champ Israel Adesanya. They're all very high on him, and I'm not sure 100% if the odds are because of the fighter or because of the fighter she's associated with. Um, I have... Don't have a huge lean on this fight, mainly because I like Moreno, but he just seems perpetually green and not finding the appropriate fight IQ that he needs going forward for his talents. So, Mike, I know you really like uh, Kai here. By all means, tell me why he's going to beat Brandon Moreno. Well, Kai Carr of France has been a top prospect coming out of New Zealand for a long time. He's super disciplined and he's super coachable. 
I think that um, he's got a higher ceiling than Murano only because he's more disciplined and so that he won't take higher risk by throwing wild stuff. And uh, Moreno, I love him a lot, but he'll do wild things and sometimes that will end, make you end up falling on your back, uh, make someone end up in top position, so then the judges can see and think that you're losing. So I think this is a spot where the UFC is going to uh, show off their their little prospect in Kai Car France. I think that his jiu-jitsu is well-versed enough to uh, withstand any submission attempt, but his striking is more diverse and superior than Murano, that he could edge a decision victory over here. Daniel Tamor. Now, don't get too excited. This this is the bad brother. As we talked about, there's a good brother and there's a bad brother in any MMA sibling relationship. This is the bad one. <laughs> he is currently minus 105 versus Chase Hooper. Hopper, Hooper. Still not sure on that one. Minus 115. Uh, this is the uh, kid with the tons of hype. He was supposed to debut earlier in this year, but it's got pushed off a little bit. Um, Tamor is 1-3 in, in the UFC. and This seems to be a setup fight for Chase, who is the youngest fighter on the roster. Even with his delayed debut, he's 20 years old. So by far the youngest. Um He's got some solid skills, but uh, in my opinion, he's a fairly wild striker, and that's he's gonna it's gonna eat him alive <laughs> later on. But uh, he should win here. Uh, Tamor, this Tamor uh, gasses out pretty bad, and I like Chase. I would never bet this fight because, as previously stated, I stay away from UFC debutants. Uh, Mike, how do you feel about the lesser Tamor versus the hot shot prospect? Yeah, well, definitely the worst brother of the two. Uh, Chase Hooper is super young and uh, got a lot of talent. I, I, I'd i say that Chase is going to win, and he should win this easily, and I'd say by submission because he's longer and should be able to take uh, Tamer's back and uh, lock up a body triangle and lock up a RNC uh, rear naked choke pretty easily. But um, it's, a, it's his debut, and I have a rule where I don't, I rarely ever bet debutants, like you said. They just aren't worth it. It's just there's, you know, the uh, the deer in headlights. There's the jitters. There's whatever you want to call it. It's a real thing. And so if he experiences that at all, traveling or, you know, in his first fight, it, it really does harm you and went in a three-round fight. So I, uh, I'd, I'd pick Cooper to win here and by a submission. But Tamer is uh, – you can't count that guy out because one big bomb could teach this kid a lesson. I'm going to throw this one right to you after a little news and notes. Not news and notes, just uh, the, the basics of what's going on. Uh, I'll probably echo many of your sentiments, but I know you're, you're really excited for this fight. Matt Brown is a minus 345 favorite over Ben Killer B Saunders at plus 285. The Immortal is back from retirement to fight the spiraling downward Ben Saunders. Saunders has been finished in five of his last six fights, four of those by KO, TKO. He has one lone win in there. Um, I know you have a major leaning and more just a passion about this fight. I'll probably echo most of the same sentiments after the fact, but how are you feeling about the Immortals return to MMA? Well, I'm stoked to see him because I know he's hungry to get back in there after training all the the people he's been coaching. So uh, I, I think this is a great matchup for him in the sense of him and Ben Saunders are very much alike. They both really kind of want to stand and bang and, uh, uh, Matt Brown is a lot better at standing and banging. Uh, the, uh, ben Saunders' chin is just not there anymore. It's just blown out like a bad tire on the way to Vegas. It's just the uh, it's, it's limping long, and it's it's just not going to get him there with the fight like Matt Brown. So I see this as a great position for Matt Brown to get a finish win and and really retire. He could uh, get Ben in the clinch where Ben's going to try to get him in the clinch, and he could land an elbow or. Uh, do some type of uh, situational uh, thing against the fence with some damage and uh, teach Ben a little bit of a little lesson. But I do love Ben Saunders. My my brother trained with him in the tough house. Uh, he's, you know, his friend. So I don't want to talk too much trash, but it's just the, the fact that this is business. And I really do think that uh, Matt Brown is going to be the superior fighter that day. Well, it's not even just that. It's, it's situational. Uh, like you brought up, Ben Saunders wants to get to fight to the clinch. 
And I think Matt Brown's clinch is substantially better. I mean, and Saunders' chin is going. I mean, to the point that uh, Brown inside the distance right now is minus 180. It's like, that's insane for an inside the distance, especially for like welterweights. But whatever, that's beside the point. Um, I am full on in into the return of Matt the Immortal Brown. If he's going to take fights like this, I don't want him to see him fight the new up and comers. It's like, let him fight the, his generation or maybe slightly newer, a fighter that I am all on board for. Um, next up, Ian Heinish is minus minus one fifty uh, against Omari Akhmedov plus one thirty. Ian Heinish is back after his first loss in the UFC. He lost to Derek Brunson, which in my opinion, that was one of the best Derek Brunson's we've ever seen it's beyond disciplined, which as many of you know, that it's not Derek Brunson's MO. Um, Omar Akhmedov is a middleweight mainstay uh, in the UFC, being with the company for six years. Uh, he's coming off a win versus the undersized Zach Cummings. That's what we said when we broke down that fight. Uh, I like Heinish a lot here, just in general, uh, for this fight. Mike, how do you see this fight going? And I don't know, do you think Hanish is going to get the finish here, or do you think uh, Omari is too tough? Well, I definitely think that Ian can get the finish here. Um, like you said, uh, Omari just finished or just got the win over Cummings, but Cummings has terrible striking. It's terrible, like absolutely, like ridiculously terrible. So I, I, I don't, I don't even count that as much. But Ian Hanish has just as good of wrestling, if not better, and his striking is way, way better. He learned a lot in that Brunson fight because he saw a Brunson that was way meaner than most people seen lately. Uh, I counted him out in that fight because I bet against him and I, I lost. So it's, it, it hurt, but it is what it is. I think Ian Heinich learned a lot from that fight. I think that he's got a lot of character and that he has some potential to be a UFC star. I mean, he's a guy that went to prison, uh, made some bad choices, uh, turned his whole life around. And now he's in, you know, the UFC at the, the highest echelon of the sport and he has the chance to just prove everybody wrong who doubted him. So I really like Ian Heinich here. I was going to pick him as my pick this week, but uh, I got, you know, my boy down the road that we're going to talk about. But similar to Mike said, it's like we both have a decently heavy lean on Heinich. Honestly, if it gets much closer to even money, that's probably going to have to be a, um, going to have to be a bet. Um, that dude just has such a great story and you got to root for guys like that, especially in situations like this. Um, moving on. Uh, Caitlin Vera is minus 165 versus Alreen Aldana plus 145. Um, Irene Aldana is from the crop of uh, Mexican fighters. The UFC snatched up when they tried to make inroads there a few years back. Vera was an early favorite, not on the Mexican side, but on just the overall female MMA side. Uh, she has been off for almost two years, uh, a year and nine months, if my math is correct. Uh, that's the reason for this price because Vieira should technically be able to just take Irina Aldana down and dominate her. But given that layoff, that's how you're getting that price. It's still a little steep for me given that time off. Uh, Mike, how do you see this fight? I know in the past you have been an Aldana fan. So do you think she has a chance here to have the upset? Uh, this is a tough one for me because I actually have bet Caitlin Vieira uh, from the beginning of her career uh, up out of nowhere to where she is today. So it's, it's – Irina Aldana has way better striking, and she it's crisper, way better boxing. But – she lacks the aggression needed at the times needed in volume. So I, I don't really know what's going to happen, but that price tag is pretty hefty. Uh, if I had to pick one, I would put my money on Irene Aldana. to uh, she, She'll give you that superior boxing and hopefully get you a win. But I just don't understand the price tag after a two-year layoff. The next fight is a brawler's delight. Mike Platinum Perry, yes, the man who has platinum tattooed on his face, is plus 205 versus uh, Jeff Neal, who's currently minus 245. Neal is undefeated in the UFC, going 4-0. He just beat Nico Price, which is a big thing, because he's a pretty much highlight finish, or get highlight finished, and you know what? Neal, Neal was able to win that fight. Um, 
one reason I'm super interested in this fight is this is the first fight in his UFC career that Neil is a full-time fighter. He has always had a full-time job on top of fighting, but this will be the first one where it's 100% focused on fighting, which is kind of terrifying to see given the inroads he's already made. Um, Mike, how do you feel about this fight other than just the sheer joy of getting to watch it? I'm stoked to watch this fight. I mean, these guys are going to throw some freaking heavy, heavy hands, and it's going to be one of those things that... uh, they're both going to throw. They're both going to land. And I, I just, it's going to be who didn't see that punch and someone's going to go down. I just, I really don't see this fight going three rounds. Um, but whenever they get, we get a situation like this, this is exactly when the fights go three rounds. So I wouldn't be surprised, but I really think that Jeff Neal is the prospect here. I think that he's way more athletic and has better scrambling ability and is a, has a better, uh, ceiling for as a prospect than uh, Mike Platinum Perry. So I think Jeff Neal can get a TKO KO finish. Well, and with that, he'll borderline be off to the races with a, with a, a name like that on his record. He's going to be definitely in the upper echelon of welterweight for sure in the top 10 after that win. If he gets that win, granted, this fight has not happened yet, but I'm echoing a lot of Mike's sentiments. I actually think he is going to get the finish. 